Hello, and welcome to another episode of Anthony Explains. Uh, today we're going to talk about a question that I get asked quite a lot on open source, which is somewhere along the lines of, Hey Anthony, you work on a lot of open source projects. How, do you, how did you get started, and how do I get started in open source? And I'm here to answer that today, so let's jump into it. All right, so I just have GitHub open. <laughs> <laughs> That's not where it starts, but you should have uh, a GitHub account and a GitLab account probably to get started, uh, just so you'll be able to contribute to the you know two or three most popular open source platforms. Uh, although most of my development happens on GitHub, which you know <laughs> some people like GitHub for everything, some people don't, and you know teach their own. But anyway, we're not talking about that today. We're talking about how do you. A uh, person of any skill level, how do you get into working on open source? And the easiest way for me uh, is to find projects that I use all the time. And uh, every single one of those projects has bugs because all software has bugs. And some of them have, you know, 586 open bugs or features or, or whatever. And uh, almost every project that you'll use will have an issue tracker that has labels in it and most projects will label those issues and some of them will have an easy label or a like first time contributor label or something like that for example pytest uses status easy as our uh this is how you could you know pick up a thing that's easy and and build it to completion and what i would suggest is if you want to pick up something that's that's easy is you go to an issue tracker like that Find some bug that, you know, has something to work on. Here's a, here's an example issue. This is actually one that uh, we talked about in a separate issue and then figured out that, like, it would be nice to have a short version and a longer version. Uh, actually, yeah, this is the other discussion. And um, basically, if you want to start working on an issue, you can do like Debug Duck did here and said, um, I would like to work on this issue. That's basically what you would do. And then you can start hacking away on the project. Usually projects will have a contributing guidelines. If we go back to the root here, uh, you'll see that there's a contributing.rst. Most projects will have these, not all of them will. Uh, most of them will be, you know, if they, if they don't have one of these, they'll have some sort of conventional setup and you can follow what tools that they use or follow their CI setup or things like that. Uh, but many will have guides on like how you can get started. And the best part about working on a brand new issue like this is the maintainers are there to help you. They want you to contribute to their project. So they're they're gonna, you know, if you ask questions in this issue and say like, oh, I don't understand which files to look at or what code I need to change, they will be there to guide you through that process. Cause uh, you know, generally they want people to contribute and use their software and make things better and like bring along more people so that they don't have to do all the work. Uh, so they'll they'll help you through stuff like that. And once you've done, you know, one or two of these like easier type tasks, you'll probably have a better feel for how the code base is set up, you know, where the tests live, like what modules do what, where some of the uh, things fit together. Or as one of my uh, <laughs> one of my fellow streamers once said, and I really love this, um, he, he said, uh, yeah, I know my code is spaghetti code, but I know where all the noodles go. So after you've done a few tasks, you'll kind of know where all the noodles go. And once you know, you know, once you know some of that, you'll be able to work on to bigger and more complicated features and bug fixes. And, you know, in some cases, if you continue to contribute in that way and build up a bunch of different changes, uh, people might even invite you to become a contributor or even a maintainer of a project. And that's largely how I got started in working on all these bunches of open source projects. So like, uh, I'll show you my history in PyTest and you can kind of see like a little graph. Oh, that's not what I want to click on. I want to click on this one. You'll see kind of a little graph of like how I started contributing, like doing some some small things and then, you know, grew to more, more contributing and then became a maintainer. You can see here like, uh, can we zoom in on this? No, oh well. <laughs> You can see like towards the beginning, I did like a few small things here and there, uh, mostly to fix problems that I ran into. So like I would run into a bug writing a test suite and I would write up a, an issue in the issue tracker that was like, this is what I expect to see. This is what I got. I think if I change this, it would fix it. And you know, some back and forth there. 
Uh, but then like late, what year would that have been? Six, seven, mid, mid 2018, uh, I, started working on more and more features in PyTest and, you know, kind of, kind of got my, my feet wet. And eventually I was added as a contributor and, you know, continued to maintain that pace of contribution and was elevated to a core developer. And so you can kind of, kind of see that there, but you know, that's, that's basically it. That's how you get involved in projects. Um, there's kind of been some other situations and other projects where I get involved in other ways. So like uh, Flakeate is a good example where for the longest time Flakeate didn't really see activity or release. And um, I had experience in related things around Flakeate. So like other code formatters and linters and stuff like that. And so I offered to the, the current maintainer or the, the previous maintainer like Hey, I have some free time to work on this. I really like, I really appreciate the work that you've done here. Um, I'm wondering if I could pick up some maintainership roles and, you know, push this project on towards the, you know, towards the future. And uh, for those sort of roles, I, I kind of started by, uh, you know, going through all of the issue tracker and making sure that all of the issues were up to date and triaged and like, uh, that helped me get a feel for like what was problematic in a project and like what should be prioritized and that sort of thing. Uh, I also had worked on several features, you know, unrelated to asking to be a maintainer. Um, and so I kind of had a feel for how the code base was set up. But, you know, people people are usually happy to add other people to, to work on projects and, you know, reduce their reduce their burden, basically. But hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you guys can get involved in open source as well. Uh, and if you have additional questions on this, feel free to reach out. And if you want to see other stuff explained, leave a comment below, hit me up on Twitter, or you know, show up in my Twitch stream, any of those sorts of things. But thank you for watching, and hopefully you'll have a good one.